have you needed help anytime this week? Like maybe something big or something little. Like my one of my daughters asked me twice for help this week opening a jelly jar, yep. the same jar. And apparently, it's just gets stuck and it's hard to open. Maybe you're moving furniture and it was just too awkward or too big, and you needed somebody else's hand. Or you know, I spent this week calling around trying to find some information about a contract dispute, and so you know, I had to call the county courthouse and ask the prothonotary for help. And I didn't even know how to pronounce the word prothonotary, so I needed help with that. And, uh, you know, maybe you needed medical help. You know, you just went to a doctor and he's an expert or she's an expert and they had to give their their wisdom and their experience to help you out with what's going on physically. You know, there are some things that we just are not strong enough to do. You know, maybe it's physically strong enough, like moving the couch by yourself. Or maybe it's strong enough in certain skills. Or maybe you needed help with a computer program or something with the internet. Or maybe it's just knowledge strong. You know, you don't know because you haven't learned it. And so we need to learn from other people. You know, we need help from others all the time because we're not strong enough. Sometimes we just don't notice it or we don't think of it like that. But we can be encouraged in the middle of needing others uh, because this is a situation that we all find ourselves in. The Apostle Paul gives a little bit of this encouragement to Timothy. We've, we're continuing our look at the, at the letters from Paul to Timothy that we now call First and Second Timothy. And the things that Paul encourages Timothy in, he, he calls him to take heart and to have strength. And in verse 1 of chapter 2 of 2 Timothy, today we see, he says, You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace. Now, the grace of God is knowing that we need help. It's, it's God intervening when we don't deserve it. It's unmerited favor. And so we can't be strong enough to get that on our own. And yet here Paul says, be strong in that grace. We need both of those. We need grace that is the strength of God. So Paul here is kind of saying, be strong because God is even stronger. That's how we can have that strength. So Paul encourages Timothy over these next few verses with a, a few things. First, he talks about being encouraged in Christ's work. He says in uh, verse 8, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. Paul says that's, that's his gospel. Jesus Christ is his gospel. He's not saying that a, a religious system is the gospel. Or making sure that, that you're following the right rules or going to church at the right times and praying using the right words. It's not a system. He also says it's not a, even a, a pathway for how someone can be saved, even though it does include that. But he says the gospel, the good news, is a person. The person of Jesus Christ. It says, raised from the dead and descended from David. Descended from David. He was fully human. And God raised him from the dead. So he was, was fully God and fully human. As Paul is talking here about the resurrection and the incarnation. This fits with Paul's encouragement to Timothy that's coming next when he's going to tell him that he must be ready to save, face any suffering for the cause of the gospel, not a religious system, but the person of Jesus Christ. So he's encouraging him in the work that Jesus has done of being resurrected. So remember, what we're talking about here is a historical fact. We're not just talking about wishful thinking that the the disciples wanted to see Jesus so bad after he died that they imagined that he was really there with them. This is a historical fact, a historical event, a, a true living Jesus who died physically and was raised from the dead. Now this is what Paul is talking about here, historical fact. This is the follow-up to the first part of the chapter where he says, be strong, because God is stronger. Focus on Christ's work. Paul also encourages Timothy in this to focus on Christ's word. 
And verse 9 continues. The, uh, he said, this is my gospel, for which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Paul is physically sitting in prison, but God is still working. Be strong, because God is stronger. These can be inspiring words for us to realize that God's people can be imprisoned or even killed, but God's work will still go forward. His word can't be stopped. You can be strong in the middle of difficulty and suffering, even when it looks like things aren't working out. Not because you're strong enough, but because God is even stronger. Ironically, efforts to silence the church by imprisoning Paul and persecuting other members of the early church, it actually caused the early church to grow more. Paul said in Philippians 1 that uh, him being in prison actually led to more people being encouraged to step out and share their faith. They were bolder because they saw Paul suffering for his own faith. We see this not only in the early church where persecution led to the, uh, to the church growing, but we see it even in the last century in China. When the communist uh, revolution succeeded in China, 1945, they closed down all the churches. They sent away all of the foreign missionaries. They said Christianity is a Western religion, and so it is not, does not have a part in the new China. And they tried to clamp down on the, the church. Western believers thought that the church in China might be dead. Even over the next decades, they heard almost nothing from the Christians in China. And so it was assumed that there were very few believers. But then in the 80s, as things started to open up a little bit, words started getting out. It became clear that the church had grown during that time of persecution and of isolation. The word of God is not in chains. Today, it's estimated that there are more Christians in China than in any other country in the world. The word of God is not in chains. You personally, your impact is not determined by your situation. Because the power is not in you, the power is in the message. You might be in chains, but God's word is not chained. You are weak. But God's word is not weak. You are limited, but God's word is not limited. So take heart in the word of Christ. Paul also encourages Timothy and us to take heart in Christ's character. The next verse is starting with with verse 10. He says, Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here's a trustworthy saying. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he also will disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself. Now, the way this is written, this is probably an early Christian hymn or maybe like a call and response type of liturgical reading that was said in the churches. And the first ones we see there are, are very positive. They're, they're easy for us to claim. You know, if we die, we'll also get to live with him. We will get to reign with him if we endure. Now, that dying with him is talking about dying with him in his crucifixion. You know, that we are called to daily die to ourselves, to pick up our cross and to follow him. It doesn't mean you have to physically be a martyr. But if you are in Christ, you will suffer some way. You can judge your life by, by looking at people's reaction around you. You know, if everyone hates you, you're probably doing something wrong. <laughs> but also, if everyone likes you, you're probably doing something wrong because the gospel is offensive to people. Jesus spent much of his ministry saying things that drove people away. He would preach a hard truth and many people would leave and stop following. And he said, yeah, not everyone can accept this word. So if everyone likes what you're saying, you're probably not saying the full truth. But we have to it, Paul, or, uh, yeah, Paul says here, if, if we endure, though, we will reign with him. Now, isn't that 
part of what we teach our children. You know, we want to teach them the value of delayed gratification. Like you might not be doing exactly what you want to do right now, but if you do the hard work now, you'll be able to enjoy the benefits later. That's the way it is with the Christian life. If we endure, we will get to reign with him. But the next two portions of this, uh, this hymn, this call and response, are kind of less cheery. If we disown him, he will disown us. If we're faithless, though, he will remain faithful. Oh, if we deny him, then some will endure. But it is possible for us to deny him. If we leave him, then he allows us to leave him. This word faithless in there, and there are a lot of different interpretations of how exactly that can, uh, what exactly that can mean. But in reading it in this, it might mean that it's not only talking about, not just about those who fully deny Jesus, not that type of faithlessness, but maybe talking about like when your faith gets weak and faint. You know, maybe it, it wavers or wobbles under stress. When we're in times of intense pressure, whether it, it's moral pressure or social pressure or political pressure or, or spiritual pressure, there will be times when we become weak and we might faint, feel helpless spiritually. It's in those times that we learn to have faith in the faithfulness of Jesus because he is strong enough even when we are not. N.T. Wright says this faithlessness, uh, there's, a, there's a difference between blowing, being blown off the deck of a ship in a hurricane and willingly diving over the railing so you don't have to stay at the helm. Now, if we're just giving up on our faith, we're diving over the railing, that's the type of disowning that will result in us being disowned by Jesus. But if we're trying to hang on, if we're trying to stay at the, at the helm there and we get blown off the deck then Jesus is still faithful. The point of, of some of, one of the points of uh, this section is that when we suffer for Christ, it will be followed by glory. We work knowing that there is a prize and that some will endure and will win that prize. But there are also consequences for not doing things God's way. And not everyone will finish that race. So there are some lessons we can learn from this section for our own lives. For one, we need to count the cost of discipleship. There is a cost for following Jesus, learning from him and doing it in our lives, putting it into practice. There's a process for getting in, and it's hard. Because it's hard, that means we can also leave. We can walk away. And that leads to the next point. Apostasy is real. That's uh, talking about those who, who make a profession of faith, but then decide to walk away, maybe make a shipwreck of their faith. And this can happen no matter how far along in your, in, you are in the race, because it's not, not how far you've come, but it's, it's, are you still running? What direction are you going in? Are you continuing to move towards Jesus? We need to, to make sure that we continue to be strong and to focus on following Jesus. Third, we can learn from this that endurance is a team sport. It's not something that we can do alone. Did you notice the pronouns in each of these? If we died with him, we will also live. If we endure, we will also reign. It's not just about me and Jesus. It's about us together. We need each other. Last week we saw how Timothy was being encouraged to remain faithful and, and have that stamina in the work of God. And Paul encouraged him to keep on keeping, keeping on. And we all need encouragement at some time. There's a power and that comes from being encouraged by other brothers and sisters in Christ. We all need that at times, and we need to offer that encouragement to other people. I have seen lives changed by just a few simple words of encouragement. 
that people heard someone else say the value that they saw in them just with one simple sentence. And it transformed the ways that they saw themselves because God spoke through that person. We need encouragement because endurance is a team sport. We also need both halves of verse one that we read earlier. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. We need to be strong and we need grace. We can be strong because of the grace that God shows us. Be strong and know that God is stronger still. Being strong in grace means that we recognize that we have fallen short, that we now, though, can stand in the forgiveness that we have received in Christ. We can be strong in that grace. That's knowing that even though Paul was in chains, the gospel was not. God's word continued. So in spite of our own weaknesses and our failings, God's kingdom can still advance even through us. We see this in verse 15 where Paul continues, Do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Take heart, be encouraged, and allow God's grace to work through you. And you won't be ashamed. You'll be able to stand strong because God is stronger still. Let's pray. Thank you for your encouragement and your grace, Jesus. We pray that you would help us to stand strong in it. Help us to see your work and to hear your word, and to see your character. Lord, empower that to make us stronger in you, but knowing that you are stronger still. We pray this in your name. Amen.